since our inverse trig integrals involve some perfect squares such as du over a squared plus u squared for the inverse tangent or perhaps du over the square root of a squared minus u squared which is the inverse sine we need to sometimes complete the square in order to get it to the appropriate forms so let's just review how do you complete the square you usually have a trinomial but we're really involving just the x squared terms so what I do is I separate the x's from my constants and I go okay how do I complete the square first of all the coefficient of x squared has to be a positive one and if it is then you can go keep going so we want to take half of that number we want to square it and now I've added 9 I have to subtract 9 to balance it out I've really added 0 when I've done that this creates what's called a perfect square trinomial which can be factored as x minus 3 squared and then of course I have that plus 1 now usually I skip this step and go straight to here because if you can look at the pattern what we have is we have the x and then we have half of the negative 6 in parentheses squared look at this problem it looks a little bit backwards so if I write it like this I can still complete the square but what is my coefficient here it's negative one we can't do that in order to complete the square the coefficient has to be a positive one so what do you do you just factor out that negative one and when you factor that out we have to change the sign of that two because remember negative one times negative two is going to get you back that positive two now we're going to take half of negative two which is negative one squared but I've not added one this is inside the parentheses I've really added a negative one so that means I have to offset it by adding a positive one remember you always want to make it zeroed out so what I have is negative x minus one quantity squared plus one now how can we check to make sure that it equals to the original well, let's see if I foil this out and then distribute that negative and collect like terms I will indeed go back to what I started out with so let's see how it can apply to some integrals look at these first two examples they look very similar we have a trinomial might need to try to complete the square so the first thing I'm going to do instead of doing the calculus let's do the algebra so I have 2x squared minus 12x plus 26 in order to complete the square on the x parts that leading coefficient has to be a 1 so I'm going to factor out the 2 and then I'm going to put two blanks to remind myself that I have to whatever I have to add I have to subtract or vice versa so I can get 0 so here I go again so half of negative 6 is negative 3 I need to square it so this is really 9 times 2 which is positive 18 so I have to subtract 18 to cancel that out I've added 18 subtract 18 so now I have 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared and then 26 minus 18 I believe is positive 8 so this integral now becomes 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 8 that looks like the format of the arc tan. I could go even one step further and make it a little bit prettier, seeing that those were both divisible by 2. Go, hey, that's x minus 3 squared plus 4. Now to integrate that, that would be quite easy. It's going to be, remember, the 1 half because of that, times 1 over a, times the arc tan of u over a plus c let's look at number two about the same we have we had a negative sign here we had a positive sign here but what makes this a little bit more awkward is the three is odd So if I take 2x squared plus 3x plus 2 and factor out the two there you get 3 halves x which is not as pretty 
but it's no big deal. We're in calculus. So I'm going to take half of 3 halves, which is 3 fourths, square it. So this is 9 sixteenths multiplied times 2 over 1, which would be 9 eighths. So I have to subtract 9 eighths. So this becomes 2 times x plus 3 fourths quantity squared. And then finding a common denominator, let's see, that would be 16 eighths minus 9 eighths, which would be 7 eighths. So our integral becomes dx over 2 times x plus 3 4 squared plus 7 eighths. I could work it like that. I could also factor out that 2, just not quite as pretty. So I'd have, and the 2 is, of course, in the denominator, so it has to stay underneath the fraction dx x plus 3 4 squared and then how do I factor out a 2 out of 7 eighths? Well, what would that be? It would be 7 sixteenths. If you multiply 2 times 7 sixteenths you get 7 eighths. And then we're back into the same format of problem number 1 being an arc tan and I'll let you finish that up. On problems 3 and 4 they again look similar, but this is where most students make mistakes because of the negatives. So let's take this and rewrite it as negative x squared minus 6x plus 8, just in descending order. I'm going to complete the square on that part, so I'm going to factor out a negative 1, which changes that sign. I'm going to take half of now positive 6, square it. Now that's 9 times negative 1, so I've really added a negative 9, so that means I have to add a positive 9 to offset that. So I have negative x plus 3 squared, it's plus because this is now plus, plus 17. So as I look at this problem, this is going to be the square root of 17 minus x plus 3 squared. You want to write it in the term of a squared minus u squared, so you can use your arc sine rule. So this problem would be the arc sine of u over a, which would be the square root of 17, plus c. So when you have that negative in front of x squared, you're probably going to end up writing it in the form of a squared minus u squared. Let's just see this one again. So we have negative x squared minus 4x plus 21. So again, we factor out the negative. That changes the sign of the 4. I'm going to take half a positive 4, which is 2, square it. I've now added 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4, so I have to add a positive 4. So this now becomes this squared plus 25 which is 25 minus x minus 2 squared. So now we have a pretty nice integral to integrate. And that is in the form of arc sine. So this is going to be the arc sine of u over a plus c. Let's look at these last two examples. Now number 5 looks very similar. But this time, again, we have an odd number to take half up, a little bit uglier with fractions. And here, we have a negative 4 in front of x squared that we have to take care of. So again, we have negative x squared plus 5x plus 6. Take a negative 1 out of my x terms. Kick that constant over to the side. Take half of negative 5. Square it which is 25 fourths multiplied by negative 1, so that means I have to add positive 25 fourths. So I have x minus 5 halves squared. Remember, whatever your half of goes right there, including that sign. And then finding a common denominator, this is 49 fourths. So now we have the integral of the square root. Let's do our positive first. That looks pretty nice. Again, we have the format of a squared minus u squared under the square root, which is our arc sine. The arc sine of u over a 
plus C. Now I know a lot of math teachers would probably cringe to leave it like that. You can clean it up, dividing by 7 halves, multiply by 2 sevenths, and distribute, make it look a little bit prettier, but I I'm going to leave it like that. I'm okay with that. Let's look at this last example. Again, writing it in descending order, worried just about the x's, factoring out that negative 4, So again, when you're factoring out that negative 4, you're just really dividing my negative 4, and that leaves me with a negative 1. Now I need to take half a negative 1, and I need to square it, which is 1 fourth, multiplied by that negative 4 in front, which is negative 1. So the opposite of a negative 1 is positive 1. So I have negative 4 times x minus 1 half squared plus 4. So now my integral is 4 minus 4 times x minus 1 half squared. Now you could take this in terms of a squared minus u squared, but I think we can make it a little bit prettier. Since those both have a 4, I could factor that out. Don't forget it's under the square root sign. So the square root of 4 is 2. So I'm also going to take this 6 out as well. So I have 6 over 2 integral of dx of the square root of 1 minus x minus 1 half squared. So of course that's 3. Now I have the arc sine of u over a plus c. So be very careful about completing the square. That coefficient of x squared needs to be positive 1 before you start that process.